Good morning, welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Now we've got a collection of topics on the list for today and they are, I have a trophy. Really? I got a trophy? Yesterday was the Sky Shadow Maiden and I've got lots to talk about that. We also had the C1 Chaser FPV Maiden as well. We also flew the Micro Sky Hunter on 4S with a 3000 kV motor. Bonkers, absolutely bonkers. Uh, and also, uh, this is like a twin topic. Number one, it's reinvestment in this channel. Uh, and also, number two, it's a cheap FPV camera as well. So, let's start off with number one. I've got a trophy. That is part of Dead Man's Arm. <laughs> well, let's face it, fate was about to come. The poor model, whatever I've done with it, that sky shadow. Oh, it's sat over there on the sofa. Uh, yeah, took that out for a damn good ragging yesterday, and look at that, did it have to get a ragging? Uh, and that was my trophy from one of the flights. So, anyway, let's get on to the uh, Sky Shadow Maiden. Uh, in short, it didn't need the extra nose weight in the nose. In fact, as I'm talking about her, it'd be rude not to go and get her, so you can see her too. I gave her an absolute beating yesterday, and I really do mean that. I've taken, I've actually taken all the pins out of it, uh, but oh, there's a bit of foam poking out there. Oh well, it's only a flesh wound, uh, and then the bottom's looking. Well, I've got more pins in the bottom at the moment because I spotted another crack in there as well. Uh, but this model took an absolute beating yesterday. Uh, her, I'll give you like a basic overview. Her, her line of sight maiden went really, really well. It's uh, That's actually rendering on the other computer at the moment. Uh, and I'll get it uploaded and posted in the Facebook group late, late this morning. Uh, maiden went fine. Her FPV maiden, well put it this way, I, ha I had the confidence to go in and out of trees with her. Uh, and I had a few near misses uh, and not a near miss as well. Uh, so her maiden kind of set the tone for the rest of the day. Uh, then I also absolutely smashed it around Dead Man's Arm and it was completely my fault. Me and Dead Man's Arm have been dicing with death for weeks uh, in short and I finally got round to hitting Dead Man's Arm uh, twice in one day. And I had two very, very long walks of shame as Dave stuck in the Facebook group. Thank you, Dave. Uh, so, yeah, good model. Didn't need the extra nose weight in the end. Uh, does fly beautifully in a straight line, only a little bit of waggle in the actual model as you take the throttle off and wind down, uh, and the power it's absolutely fine. Uh, inverted, unbelievable, as I'm sure you're going to see in the episodes which I've already got out, is that I do like to fly that model inverted. It does fly inverted exceptionally well, that is for sure. Uh, what else have I got on there? Yeah, I've got several episodes on the way out. Uh, oh, do note, note for the FPV Maiden is that I do leave all my mistakes in. Uh, so, And by the way, at 4 minutes 50 in the, uh, which one was it? Uh, yeah, and the Tree of Doom, that one there, 4 minutes 50, absolutely hilarious. <laughs> you can hear me in the background, go, in the background going, Landon! <laughs> I'm sorry, it made me laugh a lot. Uh, on a serious point though, uh, if you're getting one of these and you're only going to be flying it line of sight, for goodness sake, stick some white tape on there or put some spray paint on it because it is exceptionally hard to check the orientation of this model line of sight, especially if you've got her in the distance. So do put some form of markings on this model and I really don't think the red uh, stickers which come with it uh, would be enough. Do put some markers on there, especially underneath the wings so you know which way it's up, which way it is up. Uh, again, there was a moment, I would, well, you probably won't be able to see it very well uh, on the Maiden because I'm using the run cam on the top of my baseball cap, but I count the turns so I knew where I was coming out. Now, I've learned that because I've put enough models in the ground to count models as they spin. Um, so if you're not kind of like at that kind of experience level, uh, put tape on that model so you know what's going on. Uh, so brilliant little model, took an absolute beating yesterday. Uh, in fact, let me go and show you 
how much of a beating this model and again i'm just assuming that you haven't been in the facebook group and have seen the uh, sheer amount of abuse which i gave this model yesterday uh let's have a quick look to see what's been uploaded uh right there we go uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that minor um, crack <laughs> in the wing. Uh, that was the first, well, we've got a little crack over there. And that's what I did on her FPV maiden into the tree of doom. Uh, and then this big crack happened because I flew it into dead man's arm. Uh, and by the way, it was a very, very rigid model. Uh, and uh, I just put some tape over it and flew it again. It was, it was definitely flight worthy. Uh, the FPV camera did pop out, so that's why we've got the tape over the top. I did have to bodge that back in. Oh, you can also see that I've got a 1.8 battery in there. Now, I was also running 2.2 batteries, and there was plenty of room uh, behind that to put a flight control board in. Uh, yeah, you would definitely be able to fit a mini APM in there, uh, a NASI 32, or any like 3.5 sides boards. But to be frankly honest, and be to be brutally honest, you don't need a stabilizer with this model at all. It flies straight. You don't need the stabilizer. Well, if your weather conditions are likely to be pants, then yeah, a stabilizer would help. But to be frankly honest, you don't need one in this model. Um, yeah, it flew absolutely fine. And uh, there's a side view on it. As you can tell, I had a cracking time yesterday. It was brilliant fun. Uh, and there's me after the second uh, fight with Dead Man's Arm. Uh, taped her up again. Uh, and there is my trophy. And my trophy is right here in my hand. And this is part of Dead Man's Arm. Uh, yeah, brilliant. I'm keeping that. Now, what else have I got in here? Yeah, we did have to do a bit of a glue up sesh. Uh, and... I yeah, properly cracked it all the way across. And then, by the way, that was full, uh, well, you'll see in the videos, but basically it was a full speed impact uh, to a dead stop, uh, literally a dead stop. So there's some more pins going down uh, the wing and I know my head will be in the way in there. And I'm just using dress pins just to dovetail the uh, joints. Now, I used goop glue on the wing and I, you'll see this in the actual build episode. I do not use hot glue on my models. If I'd used hot glue, chances are those seams would have broken. I did not get breaks on the seams. None of the, well, the back seam was uh, broken back here. Uh, that's because it's only a thin little area. But hot glue, that model would have disintegrated. Literally disintegrated if I'd used hot glue. So instead, by using goop glue, that works absolutely brilliantly. And I've used a bit of uh, Yoohoo Power glue uh, in the wing and just to seal up the, the, the minor cracks <laughs> uh, in the wing. And that has worked absolutely brilliantly. Uh, and there's another photo of the bottom of it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of pins in there uh, just to dovetail them in and just to keep it still. And I've had I've found a little bit more which needed to be done. Uh, besides that super robust, super robust model, it has done really, really, really well. And there are lots of episodes uh, on YouTube. Um, well, I published two already. Uh, there is a third one, uh, which will get published later today, I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, really, really good fun. Let me just put that to one side. Oh, there is going to be a note. In a moment, I'll get to that at the end of this episode about a very cheap and very capable FPV camera, which is, you will need one of those, and I don't know what I've done with it now. It was here on my desk. Uh, apologies, it was here on my desk. I'm sure it'll appear after this, I've finished the recording. Uh, but you do need that, that camera is about $12, and you do need this little board, which is about $3 odds, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and I was using that yesterday in less than ideal conditions and it was absolutely brilliant. So we'll get to cheap FPV cameras in a moment. Let's change topic onto the C1 Chaser. Now I didn't get any video footage of a FPV maiden. 
But to be honest, it was a sad day. Um, I don't know whether I've uh, put too much of a high wing load in on this model, or I just didn't give her enough welly, or we didn't give her enough of a throw uh, for the launch. But in short, it went up and then went back down again, and I couldn't get the throttle off fast enough, and the motor ripped the motor mount out the back. Now, I don't know. Yeah, you can't see in that photo. Come on. Chop, chop, chop. Just, ah, there we go. Uh, that is what is left of the motor mount, and that is going to be a royal pain in the rear to replace or to fix. Uh, the reason being is because you can see how much goop glue I've got around that edge. Uh, I really do not fancy uh, trying to take that plastic out. Uh, so my thinking right now, and by the way, I really do need your help with this one, uh, if you've got a better suggestion, uh, which is what I was going to go and do was work out the dimensions on this outside piece uh, and then cut a circle of plywood and then mount that on this side and then on the inside also mount another piece of plywood in there as well uh, and then screw through either side uh, and then mount the motor in on top of that. Uh, so that is going to be my approach for that, well, unless you can come up with a better suggestion. Uh, is to make basically make a, a plywood sandwich, piece of ply on this side, piece of ply in from the inside, uh, and then glue and screw that into place. So that's my plan for that. Um, I was royally annoyed yesterday. Uh, combined with the um, extra thing is that on my Phantom FX61, which I took up to also fly as well, went to live up, lift up the uh, nose piece uh, on the lid, uh, and it left the catch behind. So. I didn't want to put any tape on that model, so I elected not to fly it. So, yeah, unfortunately, I carried that one all the way to the flight line and then didn't end up flying it, which was very frustrating. Uh, so that's the C1 Chaser. Mm, didn't go to plan. Was really looking forward to flying that one. I really was. Uh, so that was kind of frustrating. Oh, and next topic, Micro Sky Munter, which is here somewhere. I'm taking that motor out in short. Uh, I loaded her up yesterday with a 3000 kV uh, 2836 motor uh, with a tri-blade uh, 4045 prop. Absolutely bonkers fast, like ridiculously bonkers fast. Now Dave took a video of this. Uh, I'll put a link to Dave's video in the video description uh, in the video description or in the show notes underneath this video, uh, and you'll be able to see it line of sight. It is ridiculously fast, like bonkers fast, and the airframe shaking like that as we're going through the sky. Absolutely fucking bonkers. But what I have been and done is turn it turn it into a one-trick pony. Uh, so, frankly honest, it was great to scream it around the sky uh, out on a 3000 kV motor, and it sounded like a jet engine where it was so loud. Uh, and that 4S battery, I, I had a 4S 1.3 uh, A-Spec Nanogy uh, Turnogy battery in it. Uh, that flight, which you saw, left the battery on something like 31%. When I got back down again, it was really hot. Uh, well, it was, wasn't that hot, uh, but it was warm, to say the least. Uh, and it came back down on 31%. And when I put it in there, because I checked it beforehand, it was on 99%. So I did 60% of a battery in about two minutes. Bonkers, absolutely nuts, but completely impractical because I would have liked to fly it again during that day. Uh, and whereas that if I'd had the SC2205 motor on the back, then I would have been able to do that. I could have had 4S fun and I could have had 3S fun, whereas I just had one flight of it. Didn't fit the bill. Uh, so, unfortunately, I will be taking that motor off. Now, that episode is currently only available, available in the Facebook group. Uh, the link to that episode is in the Facebook group. I'll put, again, I'll put a link to the Facebook group in the video description for you as well. I will do an edited version of that and get the FPV camera uh, view in there as well. But I've got lots of other things to do at the moment, so we just frankly have to wait. Next topic... Uh, right, is the last topic which we're going to cover today, uh, which is reinvestment into the channel. So on my desk here, I'll, I don't know which one of these packages they are. One of these has got a Runcam Night Eagle. Uh, after seeing Bruce over on RC Model Reviews uh, fly through those trees 
at night, basically. Brilliant. Had to buy one. I've also got the Runcam Eagle in... Well, I'm assuming that's the Runcam Eagle because uh, I blew the other one up. I'm such a dick for doing that. So I won't be doing that for the Runcam Eagle. Uh, and I also have the replacement Runcam Owl Plus. Again, I don't know which bag's which, but they all feel like Runcam boxes. Uh, but I did want to stress here, this is, this is me reinvesting into the channel. Okay, I wanted to just make that point on there. The run uh, Night Eagle, frankly honest, I probably would never have bought it. Um, but the channel is, is starting to rotate now. Remember I said about that flywheel in the introduction uh, episode, which you, if you have not seen that episode yet, uh, let me just quickly show you it. Uh, I'll point it out to you because you definitely do need to watch this one. Uh, it's the one which looks like that. How I started this channel by accident and more about Matt. Do take your time to watch that episode uh, and we are getting to the stage where we can now start reinvesting uh, in the channel. So I've got two pretty cool cat FPV cameras and again for you that's fantastic because that means we get more footage on the flight line, uh, well from the flight line. Uh, and the last topic for today, which I feel it's like it's really good timing for me to bring up those run cams and the reinvestment in the channel, because this is a topic which I've really wanted to get to. And unfortunately, I've been and killed my camera and I still can't see what I've done with it. It's here somewhere. Anyway, a uh, super cheap FPV camera. Now, if you are on a budget, this camera here, I'll put a link to it in the video description for you. Uh, to be honest, I bought the NTSC version because that's all they had available at the point in time. And to be honest, 90% of you, 99% of you, will probably not be able to tell the difference between an NTSC camera and a PAL camera. Uh, so if they do run out of PAL, for example, NTSC is okay. So that camera is $12, okay? But you do need a board to go with it, and that board is this board here. Okay, so an extra three dollars. Now you don't need a board per camera. You could buy two of those cameras and just have one board. Uh, and this little board here allows you to plug this into the back of that camera, and then it knows you. And then enables you to change some settings on there, specifically wide dynamic range. It is not enabled by default on that camera. Turn that on. Okay, and now there is a challenge. You need to go and find the language menu, which is annoyingly on the third screen. Okay, this is why I need to get it up. Uh, we'll find the other one so I can show you where the menu is and how these buttons work. Okay, because it is a bit weird and I'm sure many of you will fumble your way through it. But get that board, plug it in the back of there, change the menu to English, turn dynamic wide range on, and what you've been and got there is a fantastic FPV camera for $12 and that's the camera which I was flying uh, in the Sky Shadow yesterday and it was a very dull day and it did absolutely fantastic. Well, in fact, it was a really nice mix between bright sunshine going in and out the clouds at the top uh, and just overcast and that camera did fantastically well and it cost $12. Uh, I will do an episode on that later and I have been and bought one again, well in fact I bought two, uh, so that I can show you all of this working together uh, and how to set it up, um, turn dynamic wide range on uh, and there was another setting which I've forgotten off the top of my head, but yeah, super cheap, uh, really really good and that's the camera I was using yesterday uh, in the Sky Shadow. So with that said, a um, quick recap, I've got a trophy! from Dead Man's Arm. Number two, Sky Shadow Maidens yesterday. I absolutely spanked the living daylights out of that one. Uh, and trust me, well, you don't need to trust me at all. You just need to uh, check one of the video episodes which we've got out uh, because I absolutely spanked that video, uh, sorry, that model yesterday uh, to, well, lesser models, it would have absolutely destroyed. Um, and you will see the impacts which I did to it. And it kept a bit of sellotape on the flight line, carried on flying it. Came home last yesterday afternoon, stuck some glue in it, and it's gonna be ready to fly today. Well, I need to go and find a camera to stick in it uh, because uh, one of the impacts was bang, straight on the FPV camera, black, and it was just in the ground. Not good, not good. But anyway, I had fun. Um, poor little thing, I think it had fun-ish. 
Uh, the C1 Chaser, oh man, that went horribly wrong. Let's not speak of that launch ever again. Uh, the Micro Skymanter, absolutely bonkers. The link to that video is in the Facebook group. Do check it out. It is bonkers fast, but... I'm going to be frankly honest with you, I'm taking that motor off because I want a smaller motor which I can fly it around more. It's a great little model for whatever it was, 30 quid-ish. Um, I'm sure I paid below 30 quid the first time around for the parts because I had some points to use up and stuff. Like I said, reinvesting in this channel. Uh, so I actually paid way, I think I paid about £26, something like that, uh, for all the parts before. And I think you can buy all the parts now for about 36 quid before a discount code. And in fact, you can buy the whole model for about 40 quid uh, as well. Brilliant little model. Uh, and then the last topic was about reinvestment in this channel. I do have a Runcam Night Eagle here. I do have a Runcam Eagle. Uh, and I've got my replacement uh, Runcam Owl Plus, which was literally dead on arrival. And I will make a point on that one. Uh, that one will go in the cement mixer with the, um, what should we call it? Oh, yeah, the Wanknetic, which, by the way, I don't know if you've seen Bruce's video. It looks like he's having problems with his nose as well. Uh, on that model not very good so with that said for myself matt thank you ever so much for joining me for today's rc coffee chat if you are out flying today please chuck a battery in for oh no actually i might flying as well quickly this morning i've got an hour or two to myself i've got my girls this afternoon which is going to be great fun but this morning i am going to be getting some flight time in i've seen the weather out this morning it's absolutely misty across the sky. It's going to be brilliant. Phantom weather every day of the week like that. Brilliant. Can't wait. Um, sorry, I'm mildly excited about flying through some mist and then going up and seeing the sunshine and coming back down again. Uh, but anyway, uh, my point being, if you are out flying today, have fun. Okay? Yesterday, I'm sure some of you were probably frankly horrified by the photos uh, of that one getting, well, in less than ideal conditions. It's a piece of foam. Rag the nuts off. That's what this channel's called. I had loads of fun yesterday. And of course I was really pissed off with myself. I had a really long walk to go and fetch it from Dead Man's Arm. Twice! Uh, and then Dave taking a photo of it. Saying Matt's on his long walk of shame. And I'm a little dot in the, in the background, you know? <laughs> Have fun. This is what this hobby is all about. Uh, if uh, And again, if you've never flown FPV before, go and get yourself a cheap setup. Uh, in fact, that FPV camera, absolutely brilliant. I, I wholeheartedly mean it for $12. It is just a no-brainer. Uh, you definitely do need that little board to go with it um, so that you can change the settings. And I will get that out in a, well when uh, the replacement camera turns up for me because I've properly broken my other one. Uh, so, $12 and a little uh, video transmitter, which costs like 10 quid, something like that. Brilliant, brilliant fun. And you actually put your face on the end of the model. Anyway, I'm going off topic because my point, well, I am still kind of on topic. My point is being, is have fun, okay? This is a hobby and it's meant to be fun. Uh, I know many of you enjoy the build stage, a stage which I personally really hate okay i really don't like building stuff at all it drives me bonkers uh, and the reason why it drives me bonkers is because i much prefer the flying stage now i know for some of you that's the complete reverse you're scared of the flying side okay but they all do kind of go hand in hand you you've got to build the model to be uh, be able to fly it uh, and for me that's like an a necessary evil was building the model to be then go on and be able to fly it um, but when you do build a model it is like I said in well you'll find out in the build episode for this one many other people have stuck their model together with hot glue okay like I said if I was if I really well if I just wanted to go out and fly it then I would just use hot glue that's not me at all I knew that I was going to thrash this model I know that I thrash all my models so I used a decent glue for it um, and I'm going off topic again. I do apologise. There's just different parts of this hobby. You've got the build stage, where you even got the design stage if you're making your own stuff from plans. You've got the design. You've got the build. 
you've got the flying, you've got FPV, you've got medium range, you've got long range, you've got line of sight. Oh, and then of course, we've all got the same stage, which is called the repair stage as well. It doesn't matter a bit which bit you like and the most out of it, just enjoy it. That's what it is. It's just about having a bit of fun, isn't it? So on that note, like I said, I'll put a link to that camera in the video description for you. Uh, again, shameless plug for the Facebook group. That right, it is absolutely bonkers fast, that micro Sky Hunter. In fact, it's too fast and it's just turned it into a one trick pony. So I'm gonna be taking that motor out so I can muck around with it normally, if that makes sense. It was fast enough with the previous setup. Um, I hate to admit it, I'm, but by the way, I absolutely love going fast in models. Um, the whole, I, that, that's my, I like being on the edge. Uh, and I was definitely on the edge on that one. But it then meant that I couldn't fly it around for the rest of the day. So yeah, brutally honest. And I know many of you would love to see me doing more flights with it. But to be brutally honest, I enjoyed it how it was. There's some irony for you. So on that note, have a fantastic day's flying. Uh, and if you're not out flying today, I can guarantee you I will be sticking a battery in that one and absolutely ragging the nuts off it for you. Inverted as well. Oh, I forgot to mention, that one flies inverted unbelievably well. So anyway, on that note, for myself, Matt, have a fantastic day and I might see you again 50-50 on tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. On that note, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this episode and I shall see you most likely tomorrow morning. Cheerios!